She never should have rented this apartment in the mortal city. The cold comes through every crack. She puts her hand up to the radiator's broken, so she has to use electric heat. And tonight was the first date with the brother of the guy she worked next to. He lived a couple streets away. He listened. He had things to say. She asked him up for dinner sometime. Sometime was tonight. The radio gave updates on the ice storm while she made the dinner. They said from all the talk, you shouldn't drive or even walk, and this just in. We're asking everyone to turn out their power. They need it at the hospital. She ran around pulling plugs, then she called him up. Maybe now they shouldn't meet. He said that he would brave the streets. She met him at the door with a blanket and a candle, saying, "I heard it on the radio. I had to turn my power off." He said, "You're not the only one. The streets were dark tonight. It was like another century with dim lamps." And candles lighting up the icy trees, and the clouds, and a covered moon. She said, "What kind of people make a city where you can't see the sky and you can't feel the ground?" I tell you something, I have this feeling that the city's dying. He said, "It's not dying, it's the people who are dying." She said, "Yes, yes." I think the people are dying and nobody cares. We got all this technology. Our dream was bold and vague, and then one city got bad planners. One city got the plague. Why did you move here? She said, "For the job, for the job." And I've been so lonely here, so lonely. There's no one I can talk to. You know, I don't even know your brother. He smiled and said, "Sometimes at night I walk out by the river." The city's one big town. The water turns it upside down. People found the city because they love other people. They want their secretaries. They want their power lunches. And think about tonight. I heard the same newscast you did. I unplugged everything. I looked out the window and I think the city heard. I watched as one by one the lights went off so that they could give their power to the hospital. They ate in silence while she thought this over. They sat together in a dark room. In the mortal city, shifting in their blankets so they wouldn't get spaghetti on them. Then came the awkward moment after dinner. What to do? The ice was still falling. The streets were still dangerous. The cabs were not running, and this neighborhood was not the greatest. Both looked at the space where a couch would have been. She felt her stomach sink. She felt like she could hardly think. She said, "I never should have rented this apartment in the mortal city. The cold comes through every crack. I put my hand up to the radiator, doesn't work. I have to use electric." Settled it. 
they would both sleep in her bed. It was a matter of survival. She brought out t-shirts, sweatshirts, sweatpants, socks, hats. If there was ever any thought of what would happen in that bed tonight, there was no question now. They could barely move. They were wrapped up like ornaments, waiting for another season. They lay in bed and listened to the pelting ice. They said, "My brother's not a bad guy. He's just quiet. I wish you'd like the city." She said, "Maybe I do." I have a special kind of hearing tonight. I hear the neighbors upstairs. I hear my heart beating. 